All right. In this video, we are going to look at equality for all redo. So bringing back up our to-do list here, what we want to do is tackle the task. You can see it in bold there that I have common equals there because we do have code duplication here and we can get to a common equals method. And what we're going to do is if we remember, we do have an object oriented programming language that we're dealing with. So we can look at it using inheritance. So right now we have the two classes, dollar and franc, very structurally, literally structurally the same. You saw me in the last video, I did a cut and paste and replaced some words from dollar to franc. What we can do is add in a base class called money and have these two classes inherent common functionality from. So kind of a cool thing about an object oriented programming language. So what we want to do is go through and do this refactoring and make sure that our tests still work. So we should be able to refactor this without breaking tests. That is the theory at, all, at least. I'm going to jump over to IntelliJ and do that now. So you can see down here, I have my test up at the top. Down at the bottom is my actual classes. And now I can come over here and I'm going to say new Java class. And we'll call that money. Like so. So we not, we've got added in a money class. And let's tackle dollar first. I'm going to say he extends. So by just extend, extending it, we really haven't broken anything. So I can come up here, tell IntelliJ to run all the tests. And just to, by extending out that class, it really should not have broken anything. And we can see that our tests are still green. So the first factoring we want to do is we have this common property called amount, just an integer. So I'm going to take that away from dollar and put that into money. Now, we can't have it private because we're inheriting, but if we change it to protected, we can do it, do it like so, and dollar will be happy. And we can see that our test will still run okay, even though we've pulled that up to the uh, parent class. Now we can refactor the equals method to be money. And we can see this still runs even like that. Now we can see that this is still going, everything's fine there. We're running our test, making sure that those do in fact run. So let's come in here and I can pull that equals method because what we ultimately want to do is get that up to the parent class. So I'm going to uh, cut that out of money, come over here and we'll implement it there. And let's change our properties names to be money. So that would make more sense because we do have a parent class. It's not a dollar or a franc. So now that is there. And let's make sure that our, our tests uh, still run. So I'll come up here and run those. You see that we're compiling at the bottom. Now our, our tests are all green. So the refactoring of dollar looks pretty good. Clean up that extra line there. So dollar now looks good, but we haven't touched the Frank class. And we can do the same refactorings there. And in fact, we can get rid of the amount property right away. Oops, forgot to put in money. And of course, the equals method that we implemented, that can also go away. So let's go ahead and run our test again. And we can see that all our tests are uh, still indeed passing OK. So gone back to the to-do list here. And you can see that I uh, crossed off the common equals, but now I've added in a task as well. And right now, because we have the common equal and we, we are inheriting from a base class of money, francs and dollars would also survive the equals test. So that's why we want to make sure that we can't say an object of five francs is going to be equal to an object of five dollars. So that is now on the list and we will address that in the next lecture about apples and oranges.